still there. So I, I was talking with uh, one of the children yesterday and, and you know, I asked them, you know, where, where, what, what they're doing today and, and somehow it got on, what, what am I going to wear, you know, and what have you. So, so I just told them, you know, digging around, I don't know what I'm wearing, but I said I am going to wear my Allen Edmonds and get them shined up, okay? So y'all see my shine, you know, that, that, that was my way of, of riots and, you know, I may not shine here, but I wanted to make sure I got my shoes shined. But, 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 but I'm admitting that, that, that I allowed that to mess with my mind and go to bed with additional stress uh, because this so-called friend said, uh, Lindsay, knock them dead, knock them dead tomorrow. But oh, I thank God when I got up this morning, I sent Elder Griffin the spirit of the Lord saying, Lindsay, you don't have to worry about knocking them dead tomorrow because I knocked death dead. 2,000 years ago, and because I knocked death dead 2,000 years ago, you don't have to worry about it today, because my performance, as the song said, he snatched the victory from the grave. The devil thought he had won on Good Friday, but uh, Sunday morning when Jesus got up, he snatched the victory from the grave. And so because Jesus, you want to know what went on that first resurrection Sunday? It was the day that death died. It was the day that Jesus put the knockout blow on death. And the good news is when the Lord said, Lindsay, I done already knocked death dead. And so it's not up to you or your performance or anybody else's performance. And what this has to do with receiving Christ as Savior, just like it seemed like the Lord was saying to me, either you can depend on your performance to carry today, or you can depend on the fact I did already knock death dead. Well, I want to let you know you've got a choice today. You can depend on your good works, and uh, and therefore you you have to you don't have to receive Jesus, but remember you're going to be the one who have to pay. Or you can't receive Jesus, and you no longer have to pay. Oh, that's good news. That's good news. Oh, oh I'm going to move on because even that phrase, knock them dead. See, you, you know that phrase has to do with it's used to tell somebody to perform or play as well as possible. My friend has a theatric back, you know, the, uh, theatrical background in drama. So anytime they tell them to knock them dead, they know what that means, okay? Immediately I have to look it up to find out what it means. But oh, it's still some good news. I don't have to perform. You don't have to perform. All you have to do is to receive this morning the finished work. Last and then I'm through. Then I'm through. Oh, if you're going to uh, rediscover hope, you're going to rediscover hope. We, my friends, we've got to receive the truth of the gospel. We, we have to believe the truth of the gospel. We have to receive Christ as Savior. But also and ultimately, the, go the good news is, my friends, we've got to open our eyes and experience a transformed life. Oh, the road to recovery, to recovering real hope has to do with we experience a transformed life. When you look, I just want you to see, look what happened in these guys' life when, with Jesus. When not only they realized Jesus had paid the price, when they invited him into his life, but would you look at what happened afterwards? It says in verse 30, uh, it came to pass after he broke bread and, and blessed it. Look what happened in verse 31. Oh, praise the name of God. Look what happened. It says, what? There, then there what? Eyes were open, and they what knew him, and he vanished and, and went on home. But, but guess what? Look at their lives thereafter. Verse 32 says, and what they said to one another, did not our what heart burn as he opened up the scripture. And then even when you look at verse 33, it says, they, oh my goodness, they didn't stay the same. Look at what it says. So they did what? They arose up the very hour. 
Oh, my goodness gracious, they was running away from Jesus, but they headed back to Jerusalem. They were going the wrong way in life, but they headed back to face life. They went back to Jerusalem. They found the other disciples, and they gathered, and look at what they said in verse 34. They said, the Lord, what, is risen. And they say he's risen indeed. Go let, he's appeared to Simon. Verse 35, and they told about the thing that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. And overall, this is what I want you to see, my friends. Their life had been changed. Burning hearts. Opened eyes. Redirected feet, loosened tongues, and there was this life-changing experience. And I want you to know this morning is that there was newfound confidence and boldness in their life. And uh, look at here now that I'm wrapping it up. They went from being, watch this now, terrorized by hopelessness to becoming terrors for the Lord Jesus Christ against hopelessness. You didn't get it, you didn't get it. In other words, they had been haunted and taunted by hopelessness in their life, and now the tables had gotten turned. They had went back a changed person, and now the taunted was now the taunters. It had changed their outlook on life, and it had also changed their uplook on life. And the telltale sign, the telltale sign is this. <laughs> Devil messing with them. Telling them Jesus is dead. Telling them the whole thing was a hoax. Being unduly intimidated. And now, they are the ones with new hope in their life. Turned around. Headed back into the world. And they became an instrument for the Lord. And I want you to know this morning, among other things, my time is up, is well, among other things, you know what, when our lives have really been transformed, guess what? The devil can't taunt us anymore. But guess what? We, I mean, TC uses this word, become the taunters. And when I was referred to becoming the taunters, some of you know in the NFL there's a penalty called taunting incident. And when it comes to taunting, that has to do with it when one player stands over the opposition while the opposition is on the ground and spikes the ball aggressively right in the face to provoke the other team, even though they've been beat real bad. And the call is really made when the touchdown, the person who made the touchdown, celebrates, oh my goodness gracious, right in the face of the enemy. And then anytime I've heard the penalty called, even I laugh because it's called unnecessary celebration. Oh my goodness gracious, unnecessary celebration in the midst of making your opponent look bad in the midst of, of a great thing. Well, I want you to know this morning, just like an NFL will spike the ball in the face of his opponent anyhow, if there's ever a time we ought to be guilty of necessary celebration this morning. It is on today. And when our lives are transformed, we will get in the devil's face and we'll say, if you're not familiar with it, he's not the victim from the grave. Oh, another old hymn said, uh, uh, he arose up from the grave. He arose triumphant over our foes. He arose well, uh, from the dark domain. He arose this morning. Our soul to say. And friends, our God wants us to leave here today with new hope. And when I say new hope, as the musician prepares to come, friends, your life is not only we have eternity in heaven, but God wants to give you some confidence. He really does. He wants to give you some confidence. And the real confidence is this. Not only, not only, not only, 
Listen now. I stopped letting the devil taunt me. Listen now. Guess what I start doing? I start getting not arrogant, but guess what I do? I get bold. Ain't got nothing to do with what kind of shoes I'm wearing, all right? My boldness got nothing to do with it, that it's Easter Sunday. My boldness got nothing to do with what day of the week it is. My boldness and confidence says that the resurrection changes me on the inside. And I become a victor in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe God wants us to be victor. Do you believe God wants you to be a victor this morning? Do you believe that God wants you to be a triumpher this morning? It doesn't mean that, 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 that what happened, just like it didn't change Good Friday, but Good Friday changed them. It doesn't mean that your financial and your material and your physical and your hospital situation would change. But it does mean God wants to change you this morning. And if God can change you, you don't you know you have experienced resurrection hope and so as we stand on our feet at this time as we stand friends God God wants to restore this morning our hope God wants to restore our hope God wants to restore our hope very simple and powerful song this morning it says he is Lord he is Lord he has risen this morning from the dead and guess what he's Lord but when we come to grips with the fact that he's Lord it will transform our hope, transform our hope. I'll just give one.